If you're starting an e-commerce store, one of the first things that you need to do when it comes to marketing is set up your email automations. Email automations are kind of magical. They help you convert and retain customers on autopilot. You set them up once and they continue working for you while you sleep or do other things to grow your business. In this video, I will walk you through the core email automations or email flows as they're also called so that you can take your business to the next level. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which flows you need to set up, what they are, what they should accomplish and who you should be sending them to. I also have in-depth tutorials about how to build some of these flows on this channel. So if you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe to catch those. And if you're serious about growing your e-com brand, I also have a self-serve product called Flowmaster that takes you by the hand and walks you through every single little step of every email automations that you need to set up. It's called Flowmaster and it is linked in the video description below. And for a super quick intro, my name is Casey and I run Luck & Co Agency, where we run email and SMS marketing for seven and eight figure e-com brands. Email flows is what my team and I do all day, every day. So you are in the right place to learn everything you need to know about email flows. And with that, let's get started. First, let's just get this out of the way. If you're super duper new to email marketing and you're wondering what are email automations or flows, I got you. Email automations or email flows are simply automated sequences of emails. That means there is a trigger which starts the sequence and there are emails and time delays that determine what each recipient receives and when. The first email flow that every brand should have is the welcome flow. The welcome flow is probably going to become your highest revenue generator when it comes to email flows. So let's break it down. Who is this flow sent to? The welcome flow is sent to new email subscribers who sign up for your email list or your SMS list that usually happens in your pop-up on your website. And the goal of this flow is to turn that new email subscriber into a customer. So the main goal of this flow is conversion. Now, what type of content would you put in your welcome flow in order to help your new subscriber convert into a customer? First, you need to make the new subscriber feel welcome. So welcome to our community. This is what we are about. We're so happy to have you. This is where the trick is to make sure that you're introducing your brand, but you're also making it about the shopper and the subscriber and not all about you. The second thing that you should definitely have in this welcome flow is the incentive or a discount that you probably promised in your pop-up to get the person to subscribe. So make sure that in every email of this flow, you are delivering that coupon code, whether that's an actual coupon that they need to use, or you're just reminding them that they have this discount that will be auto applied in the checkout. And then finally, another important piece of content that has to be in the welcome flow is information about your products and information about the benefits that your products deliver to your customers. And the trick here is making it very easy for your new subscribers to choose which product is right for them. A lot of times the brand would be tempted to kind of show all the product assortment that they have to show how much choice the customer has. However, one of the biggest objections for customers when they shop is that they're just simply not sure which product is right for them. So I always recommend narrowing down the product selection when it comes to your email specifically and just recommending bestsellers or recommending whichever product would be best for a new subscriber to just get to know your brand and get to know your products. The second email flow that you absolutely should have if you are a DTC brand or an e-commerce brand is abandoned checkout flow. Abandoned checkout flow is often called abandoned cart flow. However, technically those are two different flows. So I'm talking about strictly an abandoned checkout flow, which is more important and will reach more people. If we're talking about who is in this flow, this flow is for people who add stuff to cart, then start the checkout process, but they don't actually buy. So the important part here is that they got to the checkout page and then they filled out the whole first page of that checkout form. So they gave you their email address right in that form and then filled out the address, I think, but they didn't actually end up buying. And so the goal of this flow is of course to help people cross that line and become a customer, help them convert. 
Another way to put this is the goal of this flow is to reduce your card abandonment rate. A crazy number, I think about 75% of cards end up being abandoned. So you absolutely need to have this flow to help people abandon your cards less. And for some brands, this flow is actually the highest revenue generating. So uh, the welcome flow, abandoned checkout flow, and then the third flow that we're going to talk about in just a moment are the three top revenue generating ones. So that's why I'm talking about them first. By the way, for abandoned checkout, I do have an in-depth tutorial on this channel that should pop up somewhere in the corner right now. So if you're at the stage where actually setting things up, go check that one out or save it to your watch later playlist uh, if you're not there yet, but you want to be there soon. So what content can you put in this flow in order to help people continue and finish their checkout and actually buy from you? The first and foremost thing is simply reminding people that they have stuff in cart and featuring the products that they chose in that email. So that's super important. And any email platform that you use should make it easy for you to do so. So it's like pretty much a drag and drop uh, situation in terms of building this flow and building this email. But the product that the person like added to their cart and added to their checkout should be featured in the email. That's very important because that content converts the most because the person recognizes the product that they chose themselves. However, you shouldn't stop there. That's like the most basic abandoned cart email that you can send. And unfortunately, a lot of brands just stop there and that's all they do. A very important thing here in this flow is overcome shoppers' objections. So you need to be very familiar with your audience and very familiar with what's going on in their mind as they shop on your website. What are the common objections that they have? A lot of times it's price, but dig deeper than the price. You know, everybody buys a bunch of expensive stuff because in their head, the price is justified by you know, the benefits that they get from that product. So if your customers say, hey, this is expensive, dig deeper and ask them whether this is like actual customer interviews or a survey that you're doing, what would make it worth it for you? What are you afraid of? Why do you think it's not worth the price? And so on. And you might be surprised by what you discover. You might highlight things like this product lasts so long, or it's sustainable and it's good for the planet, or these materials are really high quality and this is why they're better than everything else on the market, whatever that is for your product, make sure that you hone in on those benefits uh, that will make the price worth it for the customer. The other thing that you can do here is also offer a discount. I actually don't recommend doing that in the first email of the flow. I recommend trying to get people to convert without a discount first, and then introduce the discount in email two or email three of this flow. Something else that I love doing in this flow is including UGC, user generated content, because Trust is a huge objection for lots of subscribers and customers, especially if you're a newer brand, a smaller brand, you're not that well known. Uh, people just need to know that your product works. And the best proof of that is that other people use the product. So you can build trust with reviews. So if you have reviews on your website and you should have reviews on your website, if you're not collecting reviews, start collecting reviews right away. And then you can just screenshot those reviews or like copy paste them and put them in your abandoned checkout emails. That works really great. And then the other way you can build trust is user generated content. So if you have influencers or regular customers using your product and then posting Instagram stories or Instagram reels or TikToks, you turn those into GIFs or at least screenshots, and then you put that into your email as well. And there's a way to design it all beautifully and make a very compelling abandoned checkout email that talks about the product the customer chose, talks about the benefits of that product, talks about how other people are using and loving that product. And that type of abandoned checkout email is going to convert really great for you. Again, if you want to go in depth on this, check out the in depth tutorial that I have on this channel. And then Flowmaster, that product that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, takes you through every single email in this flow and the potential conditional splits that you can do here and lots of other things, including examples of actual emails, like finished emails uh, for each email in this flow. So be sure to check that out as well. The link is in the description.
The next flow in our list is the post-purchase flow. The post-purchase flow is often overlooked for a lot of brands because a lot of brands think about it just as a transactional email where it's post-purchase, so you send that after somebody purchases from you. However, it can be so much more. Uh, and that's why I wanna focus on this. For some of the brands for whom we manage email and SMS marketing, post-purchase flow is actually the second revenue generating or the third revenue generating. So even though this flow is sent to people who just purchased from you, you can still make these customers buy from you right away again. And that's the power of this flow. So who is this sent to? This flow is sent to people who just bought from you and usually this flow is triggered by order fulfillment. So as soon as the order is fulfilled, that triggers this sequence of emails. When it comes to the goal of the post-purchase flow, that really depends on how you structure it and the strategy that you put into it. The way we approach it here at Luck & Co Agency is the first and foremost goal of this flow is to make your customer feel confident and excited about the purchase that they just made. Buyer's remorse is a real thing and I'm sure if you're anything like me, there's been a bunch of times when you bought something and then you're like, um, did I really need it? Should I cancel my order? Uh, let's think about it again. So one of the main goals of email one in the post-purchase flow is overcome that buyer's remorse by including more reviews, kind of pumping people up and being like, hey, get super excited for this because you're going to have an experience of your life when this product hits your mailbox. So that's the goal number one. Goal number two is actually provide some transactional information. So some of the information in this marketing flow that we set up in Klaviyo or another email marketing platform actually mirrors the content that is in your Shopify transactional post-purchase email. So the address that the order is being shipped to, the order number, the tracking link, um, and a few of those transactional details. So that's important. And that's actually what makes this email one of the most clicked emails among your flows and among your campaigns as well. And then the third goal is to help the new customer take the next step. And that next step could be engaging with your brands in new ways. So following you on Instagram, I don't know if you have a fans group on Facebook or Discord or whatever that is, like helping them get there and become engaged with your brands in new ways. And for most brands, the next step is actually buying from you again. So you can even call this post-purchase slash reorder flow, especially for consumable products where like you just bought something, but then you can come back and buy a bunch more. We definitely include opportunities to shop more in this flow. And I recommend that you do the same. And for the post-purchase flow, there's also a super in-depth tutorial on how to create this flow in Klaviyo. So be sure to check that out on my channel. And by the way, if you watched this far, if you like this video, please make sure that you hit that like button. It really helps my channel. If you're not subscribed, but you're enjoying this, definitely subscribe. I have a ton more on my channel that already exists and that's coming up soon. So I would love to have you among our subscribers. Next up, the win back flow. The win back flow is sent to customers who made a purchase a while ago, but haven't come back and shopped with you again. So they're called lapsing customers. So they purchased from you, but they're not repurchasing from you. So you wanna bring them back and get them to shop with you again. It really depends on your product and um, like the frequency of use of your product. For a lot of brands, the time frame is about 60 to 90 days after the first purchase. So let's say like I bought something from you, 60 to 90 days passed and I didn't come back and repurchase from you. That's when you start sending the win back flow. And the goal, as I just said, is to get the customer to come back and purchase from you again. So when it comes to the content that you can put into this flow, what can you do here? Um, a lot of brands uh, start with a discount and really if a significant time has passed since they purchased uh, the last time and you've sent other emails in this time, including some email flows and email campaigns and they still didn't purchase again, then yes, a discount is what you need in order to incentivize the person to come back and shop with you again. What you might wanna do here is include an A-B test and test different offers. So is it 20% off or 25% off or 15% 
off that's going to get the person come back and shop from you again most effectively. Maybe it's a free gift with purchase. Maybe it's something else. Um, this is really a great place to A-B test because it really is going to vary and you don't want to give away 25 or 30 percent off if that's going to be just as effective as giving 20 percent off, right? So be sure to A-B test. The other type of content that you can include in the Winback Flow is UGC, again, user-generated content. So those TikToks, Instagram stories, uh, even Instagram comments. Like if you had a really good post and people commented and said, hey, so excited about these products. I use them. They're the best. I just screenshot that comment and include it in the email. That actually works super effectively and not a lot of brands do this. And then the last thing that you definitely want to do in your Winback Flow is include links to new products. So if this is a custom they've obviously bought from you, so they're interested in your products, they haven't come back in a significant time, they must have missed all the new products and new drops and new announcements that you've had in that time. So what I recommend doing is having a link to the collection of new stuff that you have in your Shopify or your shopping platform, and then include the link to that new stuff in one of the win back emails. So the last flow that I want to talk about in this video, in depth at least, is the sunset flow. And some people confuse the sunset flow and the win back flow. The full name of the sunset flow is actually sunset unengaged subscribers. And it is sent to email subscribers regardless of whether they are a customer or a non-customer. So that's a big difference from the win back flow because the win back flow is just for the customers. The sunset flow is sent to unengaged email subscribers. So if somebody has been on your list, usually for 90 days or more, and they have been receiving emails in this time, but they haven't opened or clicked a single email in that time frame. You know, that's a an indication that they're unsubscribed and we must do something significant to get them to engage with your emails again. So unlike all of the other flows that we talked about in this video, the goal of this flow is not conversion. The goal of this flow is engagement. So you're just trying to get that person to open your email and ideally click an email. And what works best in terms of content for this email flow is plain text emails. Plain text emails pass through more filters than your designed email. So they're more likely to end up in a person's inbox. They're more likely to end up in a person's primary tab versus a promotions tab on Gmail. And that's why you want to send plain text emails. Um, we usually send between two and three emails, usually three emails in the sequence. And the first email is something like, you know, hey, um, my name is blah, blah, and I'm either the founder or customer support person at this brand. I noticed you signed up a while ago. It's very uh, tricky here because you don't want to spook people and be like, oh, we see everything you do, opening, clicking, whatever. So you need to word this in a way that wouldn't spook people who are not into marketing and don't know that everything uh, when it comes to email is tracked. So you want to say, hey, looks like you haven't been engaging with our emails that much. Please let me know what would interest you ask them a question. That's the best thing actually is if that subscriber replies to your email, that's super good for your deliverability. And the whole point of the sunset flow is to improve your deliverability. So have fewer people who are not engaging and as a result have better uh, sender reputation. So send plain text emails, ask people a question, be very real and authentic. This is the type of email where you actually want a word as if you're a real person and not just a brand. And then the final email in the sequence should be a little bit more straightforward and be like, hey, looks like you're not interested in our content anymore. That's cool. We're not offended. Uh, but to keep your inbox clean and not bother you with content that you're not interested in, we're just going to unsubscribe you for now or we're going to hit pause on sending you emails. Please, if you still want to be subscribed and if you want to keep receiving emails from us, click on this link and then you just like have an all caps link uh, that goes to your homepage. It can go anywhere. That doesn't matter. The, what matters is that they click. So like if you want to stay on our list, click here. Otherwise, you know, thanks so much for, for being part of our community for, for the time that you have been. And that's it. And then the important thing is um, in most email marketing platforms, the next steps are not automated. So what you need to do is you need to create a segment of people who have gone through this flow and then call them sunset to be suppressed or something like that, and then actually manually suppress them or unsubscribe them from your list. 
So again, just to sum up, the goal of this flow is to re-engage subscribers who are not engaged and then also clean your list as goal number two, clean your list of those unengaged subscribers to keep your deliverability high, to keep your sender reputation high. Of course, there are more flows that we haven't talked about, like browse abandonment flow, back in stock, abandoned cart, which is different from abandoned checkout, and a few others. If you want to use our blueprints for how to build these in Klaviyo for a fraction of the cost that we charge for our services, make sure that you check out the Flowmaster product that I mentioned, and there's a link to it in the video description. If you have any questions about that or about anything, comment under this video or email me, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss more value-packed videos about e-commerce and email marketing. I will see you in the next video.